All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the function f of x equals x squared. And so what I want to do in this video is I want to find the derivative of the inverse of this function. So in order to, in order to find the derivative of the inverse of this function, I need, to, I need to know that the inverse of this function exists. And the way I know that the inverse of this function exists is by looking at the uh, looking at the function and seeing if it passes a horizontal line test. So again, in order to in order to be able to find the derivative of the inverse of this function, I need to know that the inverse of this function exists. So let's look at the uh, let's look at the graph. It's going to be something like this. It's a parabola. And we know that it's not going to pass the horizontal line test because it's going to pass if we look, if we draw a horizontal line, it's going to go through the function more than once, so it does not pass the horizontal line test. So Clearly, this is not gonna. This this function does not have an inverse. So one thing that we can do to uh, to fix this problem in a way is just restrict the domain to make this just x is greater than or equal to zero, or x is less than zero, or something like that. In this case, we're doing x is greater than or equal to zero. So in this way, we're just cutting it in half. So we do have uh, we do pass the horizontal line test because it goes through. That this horizontal line goes through the function only once when we have this restricted domain. So that's what we just did. So now we know that the inverse of this function exists, uh, and that's good. So we can find the inverse, and then we can find the derivative. So let's do that. Let's actually let's actually do this. And you're going to see a formula later on in this video. But for now, let's just let's just do it uh, the way we would uh, intuitively, which is just to find the inverse uh, and then and then look at its derivative. So this is just going to be equal to y equals x squared. And now I want to find the inverse. So I'm going to switch, swap the x and the y values. This is going to be x equals y squared. Now we can square root both sides. This is just positive or negative root x equals y. We're looking at when x is greater than or equal to 0. So this is going to be positive. So this is just y equals root x. Uh, this is just the inverse. Now we want to find the derivative of this which is just going to be d by dx, so the derivative of root x, this is Leibniz notation, is equal to the derivative of x raised to 1 half power, which is just equal to 1 half, this is the power rule, times x raised to the negative 1 half power, which is just equal to 1 over 2 root x, if you were to simplify and rewrite it like this. So this is actually the derivative of the inverse function. Now, another way we could have done this is by using the formula. The formula is as follows. One way to remember the formula is just to remember i, d, d, i. Inverse derivative, derivative inverse. So in order to find the, the derivative of the inverse of a function, we can use this formula. So this is going to be the inverse derivative derivative inverse. So this is the formula. It looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't because this left side is just saying the derivative of the inverse. And here is what we need to, this is what we need to look at. So now let's try to find, let's try to use this formula to find the derivative of the inverse of this function. So this is going to be f, the derivative of the inverse, is going to be equal to 1 over. So what is the derivative of this? Well, the derivative, so f prime of x, is just equal to 2x, right? That's just the power rule. So this is going to be 2 times, but instead of x, we have the inverse of f, which is just root x, right? We have that right here. So that's just 2 times root x, which is exactly what we have over here. So this is equal to the derivative of the inverse. So this is a quick way that we can find, uh, for a function, the derivative of its inverse. So this is what we got at the end. And this is accurate because we, we did it in another way and we got the same result. So we know that we're doing, we know that this formula works and we know that we're doing the right thing. So there's two ways that we can go about doing this. We can go about finding the inverse first and then finding the derivative or using this formula. So I hope you found this video helpful.